Ooh, hey, ooh, coming through here. I got the facts. Look, you know me. I bring the facts. Three of them about the Doctor Who universe and the canonical inconsistencies, showing us why we should not treat fiction like an immutable concrete text. I mean, once you start thinking about canon literally, where do you stop? If you think about it really hard, human nature happened twice. Parallel versions of Jubilee exist. Nightshade has two endings. What, did they do Nightshade twice? I mean, yeah, they did Nightshade twice, but that's what I'm talking about. These are stories. So what's the Pandorica Opens excuse? Oh yeah, the Pandorica events happened twice. Considering that the last time the Doctor was in this little prison ship, the world ended, you think he'd be quick to avoid making the same mistake again. The only reason he ends up in that prison is because of his own curiosity. But here, in the story for the Doctor Who experience, Smith got trapped in it again. There you are! Oh, finally! I was beginning to think you'd got lost. How is that even possible? Why does it still exist? To answer these questions, we'll have to head over to Wales. Cardiff, 2012. Eight... Oh my god, eight years ago? Back when Matt Smith was the Doctor, the Doctor Who experience was still standing and the world was good. Well, it was okay. I had a Doctor Who experience, for a start. Ah, the Doctor Who exhibition. I did so many of these as a young boy during the Davis years. Brighton, Cardiff, the one at Land's End had a bit in a sea base where a Dalek rose out of the stairwell. And yeah, they never got topped. It never got better than that. I love interactive experiences. And it took me all the way to the Doctor Who experiences second to last day to actually go. And uh, not to brag, it was kind of an emergency operation. I'm so glad I went. Before the exhibition itself opened up, there was a half hour optional story section. For the kids, but considering you got to go onto the Matt Smith TARDIS, have Peter Capaldi talk to you, and see real monsters in the flesh, this is probably the closest I'll ever come to getting a Doctor Who ride, or a Doctor Who horror maze. I wasn't gonna miss it. So how do they incorporate a plot into a small show building with a handful of sets? Well, easily, and very well. In fact, they did it twice. In the 11th Doctor story, you're aboard the Starship UK, where he's been trapped inside the Pandorica 2 by another alliance of his enemies. Honestly, having a backup Pandorica is cheating. <laughs> That's the most Stephen Moffat line ever. Now, isn't a second identical Pandorica pointless and nigh impossible? Yeah, but if four years of film school taught me anything, it's you use the sets that you got. This is a plot cobbled together out of sets and props, and I love it. I've got a bunch of people out shopping. Nice one. Good old screw. <laughs> Never mind, though. Let's work with what we've got. Hello, shoppers. In this, the Doctor keeps referring to you as shoppers, before then abducting said consumers and dropping them on a Dalek flying saucer. Here, you get to witness a Dalek domestic as the Dalek paradigm pull rank on the Supreme, who is still alive? Cool, the Supreme Dalek survived the events of Journey's End somehow, to only to then get wrecked off screen by his replacements. The next section was a unit quarantine zone with weeping angels, and I distinctly remember every kid just being in absolute inconsolable tears. And in the final room, the Doctor has freed himself from the Pandorica 2, meaning this whole affair was pointless, and Dalek, Cybermen and Angels entered the Time Vortex to get him. It's adorable. I guess the Doctor did reboot the universe, so it only makes sense for all the villains to come together and make the same plan all over again. Hang on, is the Doctor stuck in a time loop? In 2014, they adapted the experience to fit the current Doctor. Now, rather than the Starship UK, you're in a Gallifreyan museum, with Romana speaking to the guests from what she describes as the final days of Gallifrey, before showing a montage of just one Time Lord. Kind of a Doctor Who clip show, if you will. So, now we know what Romana's priorities were in the final days of the Time War. And now, because I guess you're in the Time War, seems dangerous, they try and call for help and make connection with the Doctor's TARDIS, before being immediately attacked by a CGI villain called the Time Squid. Capaldi goes in all of the TARDIS sets, I'm very happy at this point. Then it's the TARDIS, Dalek Asylum, Weeping Angel Quarantine, and then I am Foreman's Junkyard. All on the hunt for crystals! 
which I'm kind of sad that I didn't, I didn't get to get the crystal. They said only the kids could get the crystal. So the doctor leads a party of children, disgruntled parents, and me to defeating the time squid, which the Daleks, Cybermen, and Weeping Angels are just kind of in on, I guess. I don't know, weird plot. Everyone's talking about crystals. It kind of reminds me of that 10 second clip of Tom Baker for the Blackpool exhibition. The one that played at the end of one of the DVDs and kept me up at night. The one that the wiki refers to as a TV story. Hmm. Did the doctor ever realise he was on Gallifrey? I guess after that commotion it's just really easy to get to. Oh wait. It is. Fact number two. Don't you love it when one segment fills out the whole video? Let's rush it. Bart Simpson exists in the Doctor Who canon. Well, maybe not Bart Simpson per se, but definitely a Bart Simpson shaped alien. Yep. Yep, that's upsetting. In the comic Space Invaders, Panini Comics decided they should kill an alien who looks like Bart Simpson. A very strange creative choice and an otherwise very serious story. It's played pretty straight, other than this one weird cameo. A cameo that disturbs and upsets me. Haha, <laughs> yeah, don't own a cow, man. The Doctor universe has made many references to The Simpsons, making this even more incredulous. Oh, was this a George Lucas situation where, like, Bart Simpson channeled his brain into Matt Groening and told him, create me, man? Fucking hell. But hey, maybe it's not that complicated. Maybe they just share a fictional universe. Along with Transformers, Sherlock, and Star Trek. After all, the fourth Doctor has appeared in both The Simpsons and Futurama. Then, in a much less serious story called Party Animals, Bart can be found attending the birthday party of the alien Bonjax. And uh, it's quite the guest list. Also in attendance are a group of tiny penguins, Ivan Asimov, Worf, and a Ferengi from Star Trek, a Silurian wearing a dress, Captain Britain, Sapphire and Steel, the Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock, Darth Vader, the Hulk, the K1 robot, a cyber controller, and the Candyman. Oh, and also, who could forget? <clears throat> Combat Wombat. Here he is here. Sorry, let's drop everything and find out who the fuck Combat Wombat is. Combat Wombat wants to turn to Party Party Matthew. So it turns out he's a character from his own failed one shot. But, um. I like his deal. I like this vibe. Does this mean that Marvel Comics, Star Wars, Star Trek, and the Combat Wombat universes are all concurrent with the Doctor Who land? Yes. No more questions. It's a big multi-IP birthday party. Screw Infinity War. This is the real crossover event. I love out of control IP based storytelling. It's the same reason that Bart Simpson can hang out with the Doctor and Scooby-Doo in LEGO Dimensions. Yeah, like hell. Let's exploit people saying they own stories and characters as property. Whatever happened to the Paradigm Daleks, I hear you ask? Um, Batman took care of them. What do you think Doctor Who, Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange and Doctor Octopus have to talk about at a party, huh? Probably magic signs. Or capes. Anyway, the dreaded Beep the Meep is out of few and starts a drunken fight. And that's the plot. He's a terror, fucking you can't take him anywhere. And then, for the real diehard canonistas, there's a character called Death's Head. Yeah, those of you who know, you know where I'm headed. A Marvel creation of the late 80s, Death's Head was the character who held together the short-lived British Marvel Universe. You heard me correctly. A Marvel character who was also moonlighting as a Transformers villain has met the Seventh Doctor. And a number of Doctor Who characters, his Dog Bolter, if, if anyone is deep in enough to know who Dog Bolter is. Dog Bolter, a Doctor Who villain from Doctor Who Comics and Doctor Who Audios, has a robot called Hob. In Marvel Comics, they took Hob and turned him into a Transformer man pulled from absolute obscurity into becoming his greatest villain. All of this done in complete earnest. When I was first told about this, my mind went immediately to, oh, it's a fun Christmas special. No, this party is a core part of the Death's Head story. And who invited him to the party? Oh, Sylvester McCoy. 
So, the incomplete story of Death's Head is a sequel to a Doctor Who comic with a Doctor Who villain set on a Doctor Who planet with the Doctor Who vortex in it. Uh, sorry, that's who. Sorry, uh, uh, there's still people in my comments thinking that canon exists. We are post-canon! Officially! When will Optimus Prime show up in the TV show? <sighs> Beloved characters and fictional franchises are the playthings for brands and only exist to be used by companies as assets. Well, number one, fuck that. Number two, here's Doctor Who. Shitting all over your terrible internet misconceptions of literature and popular culture, Panini just used the Master Shrink Ray on a Transformers villain to make him regular size. And I'd just like to say thank you for this glorious little rabbit hole. Man, Marvel were in a Dicky place back in the 90s, huh? The Shadow Proclamation don't know what the Time War is. They're not thought out, the Shadow Proclamation, are they? They're just rules. They're just rules, articles and conventions for the Doctor to spout like a DI to let you know that the evil alien staging murderous invasions is also breaching space law. Yeah, great. Hey, where were you guys to stop this drug deal on a level 5 planet? or any of the rest of the time for that matter. The Doctor mentions the Shadow Proclamation more than you probably think, and yet we don't know his affiliation with it. I presume they filled the gap left by the Time Lords, but uh, there are a lot of species competing for that title. Compared to the Death Robots and the Flying Temporal Centaur Men, I find it fun how a bunch of albino bureaucrats became the World Authority. Not only were they capable of declaring war on the Daleks, but they also did have control over the Time Vortex. According to Doctor Who Adventures, anyway. So despite being the spiritual successors to the Time Lords, they don't know what happened to them. Which is weird, because people know about the Time War. There's black markets devoted to the stuff. Half the universe had their planet destroyed by the Time War. It's common knowledge. But in the Darksmith Legacy, a series of interactive books near the end of the Tenant Years, the pictures of emptiness depict the Tenth Doctor deceiving the Shadow Proclamation by getting out of trouble by requesting a trial from a jury of peers. Something that, you know, isn't possible because he's the last of his kind. And they just let him go. They think that's a very reasonable request. They fully think that Gallifrey is still intact and that the Doctor is not the last of his species. There's many stories where they just pick up after his leftovers, functioning like in the same role as the local town sheriff in Scooby-Doo. I guess the Doctor just brushed up on intergalactic lore after the Time War. What makes this even stranger is that in Gangland, it's them who have ownership of the Time Gun of Rassilon, stolen from one of their vaults. So they just, uh, do they think he'd lost it? Strange bunch. I don't think Davis or Moffat ever worked out who they were or what their deal was. May we never return to them again. Thank you for watching. Oh, I got, oh, I got like a stitch. You know, when your heart just goes. Oh shit, yeah, I better wrap this up. Thank you to my Kofi supporters. W watch the other videos. You know, you know how it is. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. I'll see you next time. If this isn't a cardiac arrest.